Okay, so here we have um, lesson 9.2, which is all about the tangent ratio. And um, so you're going to learn about how to use the tangent ratio. You're going to learn about the using the cotangent ratio, um, relating the tangent ratio to the cotangent ratio, recognize its relationship, and then using the inverse tangent in a right triangle um, to solve for unknown angle measures. So uh, we got a key term here, which is rationalizing the denominator. That is when you have a radical in the denominator, getting it out. And then, of course, the tangent, cotangent, and inverse tangent. All right. So here we have um, this, this problem here kind of sets up, and we're going to refer back to it later on. But basically, it's talking about, you know, uh, any safe ramp should have a rise to run ratio of 1 for every 1 feet to 12 feet, okay, 12 feet of run for 1 foot of rise. So, um, you know, the first thing you're going to do is you make a little diagram. Imagine uh, with this problem you're going up 2.5 feet, and then think about that ratio. You can write an equation, equivalent ratios, 1 over 12 equals 2.5 over x, and solve for x. You could do it that way. Um, and then, of course, once you have the rise and the run, you can calculate the length using the Pythagorean theorem, as this guy says here, right? Back to the Pythagorean theorem again. All right. Um, then you have another one. A deck in is uh, the vertical rise is 18 inches. So you might convert that to feet and think one and a half feet, right? One and a half feet. So 1.5. And uh, you're just doing the same thing again where you're going to say, okay, if it's 1.5 feet over X is equal to 1 over 12. And, um, you know, then once you have the run, you can do Pythagorean theorem, calculate the surface, compare the ramps. Are they similar? And what about the angles of inclination? So now um, you're looking at the shape of the ramps and thinking about the ratios rise to run. Here it says, what does the ratio of the rise of the ramp to the run of the ramp represent? Now you think about that. Rise and run, we talk, we use that term when we talk about slope, the slope of a line. So we don't have coordinates in this case, but when we calculated the slope of the line, remember we always, we always had x minus x on the denominator. That was the run, right? So it was the, what we sometimes call delta x here, and y minus y, that was the rise, right? And this is delta y. So when you don't have coordinates to calculate what is delta x, delta y, what, you know, what is the rise and run, but you were given the rise and run in a ramp right here, you can still calculate the slope of this line. So um, now it does say, are the triangles similar in this problem? Well, I want you to notice you have a right angle and a 30 degree angle. So there was a similarity theorem, right? Angle, angle similarity that you should be able to use to say that they are similar. Um, here I want you to see how we rationalize the denominator. So real quick, you can see we have um, an answer somewhere that came as 10 over square root of 2. So what happens is, you know, we don't like having the square root of 2 in the denominator. It's hard to understand um, the value of this. So what we do is we multiply by 1. Now we can multiply by 1. It's the multiplicative identity, which means that you're not changing anything. Only the form of 1 that we're going to multiply by is the one where you have a common fraction or you know common values in the numerator and the denominator so we're going to multiply by root 2 over root 2 so when you multiply root 2 times root 2 you get root 4 and the square root of 4 is 2 so we no longer have a radical in the denominator of course you have to multiply the numerators 10 times root 2 so you have 10 root 2 over 2 and then of course you can reduce 10 divided by 2 is 5 so 5 root 2 so that's that's basically your process of getting a radical out of the denominator is multiplying by the same radical so then you create a square and in the in the denominator and what'll happen is that square when you take square root of it it just basically leaves like in this case the 3 gets left behind right so it's the radical is now gone so what happened because we multiplied by a root or a radical in the uh in the top or in the numerator uh, we end up having that radical show up, right? So, so we end up with 3 root 3. So a lot of people look at this answer and they think, oh, so what I'm doing is, you know, I'm moving the root 3 to the top. And that is very true. You are, in, in essence, moving it to the top. But there is a process to moving it. Um, what happened here, it, because it happened to have 3 on top, that once you squared root 3 and got 3 on the bottom, those two could 
could cancel out, right? I mean, you're multiplying by 3 and you're dividing by 3 down here. So with a common factor, top and bottom, you get to reduce them and you end up with root 3 over 5. So you're going to be rationalizing. Anytime you get an answer that has a radical in the denominator going forward, um, they want you to rationalize it. So that's how that's done. Okay, so here again you have uh, 45, 90 uh, triangles. So you should be able to figure out if they are um, uh, similar. And I think you should be able to answer the questions about rise and run there. And now we're going to talk about what the tangent is. What, what the tangent is, the tangent tells us the length of the side opposite this angle. So that would be like our rise side right here. And the length of the side adjacent to the angle, which is our run side over here, right? So always remember the reference angle, right? They're giving us the reference angle is A. So we're looking at the opposite over the adjacent. So you just need to learn to remember that, that ratio, which is tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Uh, to help me remember those ratios, uh, what really helped me so I didn't have to struggle with it was somebody said, I had a college professor say, some old hog came around here, took our apples. And that funny little story stuck with me, and I could always think, okay, each letter is the, is the beginning of a, one of the trig ratios. And the end of that little saying, some old hog came around here, took our apples, is T, took our apples, so tangent opposite adjacent took our apples so there's the o and the a okay um so now you're going to be filling this in this uh then some people didn't know what to put here but the length of the side opposite angle b well here's angle b so the side opposite is a c so you should be putting a c as the side opposite angle b with that new reference angle so now you you can figure out what should go down there in the next one and um you should be able to calculate tangent values and recognize some tan uh, something about tangent values of congruent angles in similar triangles. So if they are similar triangles, something about those ratios, that tangent ratio, you should be able to conclude. And if you're not sure, go back and take a look at it. Now it talks about, um, uh, it says, what happens to the tangent value of an angle as the measure of the angle increases up to 90 degrees? So, you know, you're opening up, if you go back here, he's saying, what happens to the tangent ratio if this angle A was to increase. Well, as this angle A increases, then the ratio, so CB here is going to have to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So that is our opposite side. Our opposite side's in the numerator, so you should recognize here that as uh, the ratio, as the angle, the reference angle increases, then the opposite side increases, then the tangent ratio should be increasing as well. Says, consider the tangent values in question 8 and each triangle compare tangent 30 to tangent 60. You should notice something about that and um, see why do you think that happens. Okay, so here we're going to take a look at this wheelchair ramp. You're going to um, you're gonna need to figure out what's required to show that the ramp meets the safety rules. Well, remember, it's got to be a rise of 1 for every run of 8. I'm sorry, run of 12. It's 1 to 12 is what they told us earlier. So what they want you to do is write that as a decimal, 1 over 12. Use your calculator. Make sure you get it in 1 over 12. You're going to need a calculator now that has the, the trig functions in it and um, to be able to do the rest of this stuff. And make sure, she's telling you to make sure it's in degrees. Sometimes they have the options to go to radians or gradients. So make sure it's set on degrees. And then um, you can put in, uh, you can figure out the, tangent of 4 and you can figure out whether or not the tangent of 4 is a number that is greater greater than that ratio you came up with 1 over 12 right or lesser if the decimal you come up with is greater than the decimal that you come up with for a safe ramp then it would not be safe if it's lesser than it is safe okay so you're gonna use the calculator find the value of tangent 4 round it to the nearest hundred compare it and and figure out if it's safe and then here you're going to be doing again the same thing. Um, now, if you know the decimal value, you put in, oh, what is the tangent of 4? You're basically coming up with a, a ratio. So you're saying the tangent of 4 degrees is equal to x over 100. So you should be able to multiply both sides by 100 and know that x is equal to 100 times the tangent of 4 degrees. And if you put that in, you'll get a good answer there. Okay. Um, and think about that if they have the same 
angle there. Now you have a right angle here and the same angle here. Will the ratio be different? Should be a similar triangle by angle angle similarity and you should have the same solution. So now um, let's see if an acute angle of a right triangle is a measure of x degrees. What algebraic expression represents the measure of the second acute angle? So that means what would this be? Well, if this is x, we know that the three of them have to be 180 by triangle sum theorem. This is a right angle. Take that away. Now you have, uh, take away 90 from 180, and you're left with 90. So basically, in every right triangle, the two acute angles are complementary. They have to add up to 90. So if this is x, this is 90 minus x, and you can see that right here. Okay, so now you're going to figure out, uh, this is kind of a tricky one too, just to think about. You have um, two triangles. You can see their angles are all similar, right? They all have x for here, 90 minus x, and 90 over here. So they're two similar triangles. Um, the difference, obviously, there's a difference in size. So the difference in size we recognize by saying that L2 and L1 must have been multiplied by some scaling factor. And that scaling factor, we can just call it k. So this side over here would be, you know, equal to L1 times k. You know, k times L1 or whatever. And the same thing here, k times L2. So now you're going to use that tangent ratio, okay, to answer these questions here and write the ratios. I'm going to let you just work your way through that, um, writing those tangent ratios and answering those questions. Now cotangent. You notice the cotangent ratio, they're telling you, okay, here's the cotangent of A, so we want the adjacent over the opposite. So something to know about cotangent. So remember that, that prefix co often means together, right? And if you have a tangent here, and B is a complementary to it, so B is has a can, uh, tangent as well, and these two are kind of, they go together. So the tangent of A and the tangent of B are related in the sense that A's tangent um, and A has a cotangent, which is really the tangent of B. Basically, they just are the inverse of each other, the tangent and the cotangent. Um, but, you know, the idea being that uh, B's tangent is A's cotangent. That's the relationship there. So now they want you to fill in those sides again. And um, what I would do is I would... I would substitute in here so you have the cotangent of A, so write the ratio of A, and then you know what the tangent of A would be, so put 1 equals 1 over that ratio, which is, you know, opposite over adjacent, and this would be adjacent over opposite. And then just go through the algebra to prove that it is correct. Um, and it says, what can I do if there's no cotangent button on my calculator? Well, if you think about that, the cotangent of A is really the tangent of B. So if I know this angle, then, and I could find the tangent of this, I should be able to find the tangent of that. And the tangent of that is the cotangent of this, because it's always for, for B, the tangent is opposite over adjacent. The cotangent for A is adjacent over opposite, but it's still these two same exact size, same exact measurements. Okay, so now the measure of an acute angle increases, the tangent value of the acute angle increases, so you're thinking about what's happening to the cotangent value. So as this increases, right, so the opposite side is getting bigger, it's going up, 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 right, and yet this side is staying the same. So now the adjacent side stays the same, the opposite side is increasing, as the denominator increases, you should recognize that the value of that cotangent is decreasing. Okay, so how would you solve a problem like this? Well, basically, um, you want, they want you to solve this. You know that the tangent of 21 is equal to x over 4689.2. So x, if you multiply both sides by 4689.2, you get x equals 4689.2 times the tangent of 21. And you can do that using the tangent ratio. You could also do it by the cotangent ratio, which is equal to tangent of 21 is equal to um, 4689.02 over x. And then you'd have to multiply both sides by x and then divide both sides. And you need to figure out which one is better and explain your reason. That's a preference, but one of them is simpler. So you should be able to make a decision there and explain it. Key is explaining it. So that says, are all right triangles contain an, a 21 degree angle similar? 
Well, think about it. If it's a right triangle, it's got a 90, and it's got a 21, so you have angle angle similarity. That should help you answer this question. Now, the inverse tangent, this is really good. So the inverse tangent is really a way, if I know the side lengths, for me to calculate the angles, right? There's a ratio, and the ratio is tied to these angle measures to the degree. So usually we look up the degrees and we find the ratio. Well, what happens if I know the ratios? Can I then look up the degrees? Yes, we use this inverse tangent, which is given as tan to the negative 1. And that just means inverse tangent. So see how they do it is if we know this ratio of tangent of A is equal to 15 opposite over 10 adjacent, 15 over 10, then we put in our calculator tangent inverse, so the inverse tangent of that ratio, 15 over 10, and you'll get an answer. And that answer is the measure in, if you're, you know, as long as your calculator is set in degrees, it will be the measure of this angle in degrees. So they want you to do that again for B and think that through. And now you're going to calculate the measure of an angle. And then, you know, you're going to use that kind of, all this information opposite over adjacent, you can use inverse tangent, you can find the measure of that angle. And um, here you're just going to want to read carefully the difference between what is a percentage grade and what is an angle of elevation. You should read through that and be able to answer these questions. Let me know if you have any questions.